Hey everybody, it's Mike Wardinsky here with naturemike.com and today I'm going to show you how to create a long exposure without using a neutral density filter. Um, there are a couple of reasons to do this. Um, maybe you're shooting and you already have a polarizer on and if you stack another filter you're going to get some vignetting or maybe you just didn't bring your neutral density filter with you. And so in those sort of situations we can kind of create the illusion of a long exposure by taking multiple exposures and combining them into one. So right here I have a shot that was taken at 0.4 seconds f16 and ISO 100. So I could have stopped it down a little bit on the aperture but then we'd run into a little bit of diffraction and we're already pushing it at f16 so I didn't want to do that and I was already maxed out on my ISO. And so really the only other option here is to add an ND filter or to shoot multiple exposures and combine them into one. The number of shots that you need will be dependent on the length of your shutter speed. In most cases you want to shoot for 15 to 30 shots or so. The longer you can get your shutter speed, the less shots you need. That being said, it's always best to shoot more shots than what you're actually going to need. When it comes time to editing, you don't have to use every single shot. But if you don't have enough shots, you might not get the effect that you're looking for. So if you look down here, I've got 10 exposures that were all taken within quick succession and on a tripod. You want to keep your camera as stationary as possible when doing this technique because any sort of movement could cause alignment issues later on. The first thing you're going to want to do is some basic raw adjustments in the raw editor. This includes tonal adjustments, color adjustments, any sort of lens corrections that you might need to do, all that stuff. Go ahead and do those adjustments and then once you edit one photo, you're going to go ahead and sync it with the rest. So to sync your photo, click on the first one that you edited and then shift click on the last photo in the sequence. Then navigate over to sync and you're going to choose check all because we want to synchronize all of our settings and then go ahead and hit synchronize. Since I've already synced my images, I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. Now that we have our images synced, it's time to head over to Photoshop. So just navigate down to the film strip and control click on a Mac or right click on a PC and then you go to edit in and we're not going to choose the top option. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom and choose open as layers in Photoshop. The reason we chose open as layers in Photoshop as opposed to open in Photoshop is because we want all of the images to come into the same document, which you can see is happening right here on the right hand side of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward, that way we don't have to wait on Photoshop to load. Okay, Photoshop has loaded all 10 layers and the first thing we need to do is create a smart object. So to do that I'm going to select the top layer and then I'm going to shift click on the bottom layer and then on a Mac I'm going to control click or right click on a PC and then I'm going to go to convert to smart object. Now this is going to take a little bit of time and the more layers you have the longer it will take. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this. Okay as you can see Photoshop took all 10 layers and squished them into one single smart object and I know this is a smart object by this little icon in the lower right hand corner. Now that we have our smart object, all we have to do is go to the top menu and choose layer, smart objects, and then stack mode. And lastly, we're going to choose mean. And this just kind of blends the pixels in an average, smoothing them out and giving the illusion of a long exposure. So I'll go ahead and click on mean. And after a few seconds, we have our blended image. And you can see this looks pretty good. I usually like to zoom into the scene though because sometimes there's a bit of stuttering or things didn't quite match up perfectly. So I do like to inspect before just hitting save. So I'll go ahead and zoom in here. And just kind of navigate around the scene to see if anything sticks out. This is all looking pretty good. Okay, right here. This seems like a Something didn't quite mix, maybe that rock was just barely sticking out, but this is really easy to fix, especially since it's in the nice soft water here. It's not very sharp in the first place, or shouldn't be very sharp in the first place. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer by hitting the plus icon, and then I'm going to switch to my clone stamp tool, and I'm going to keep a low opacity here, maybe around 10 or 20. 
and then on a Mac, I'm gonna hold Option. On a PC, you would hold Alt, and you get this little target, and this allows you to sample from anywhere in the scene. So I wanna sample somewhere within the photo that is going to have similar colors and textures as what would be right here. So I think I'm just gonna kinda of blend this rock in over this area. So holding Option, I click, and then I can just sort of sample that area right on top of this rock, and just click a few times, and just gradually blend it in. I'm gonna take my opacity down to 10%, just to feather that out a little bit more. Maybe I'll sample from over here now and just kind of blend this in, a few more clicks. And there you go. Maybe I'll just do a little more sampling. And I'll lighten up this dark area too, just so it doesn't stick out too much. One thing I should mention about cloning is whenever you're using the clone stamp tool, you're gonna to wanna to come over to the brush hardness and make sure that it's set all the way down to 0%. This is gonna help feather out those edges and just really help the pixels blend with one another. Okay, with just a few steps, we've created a really nice long exposure image. Here's the original photo that we started with and here's where we are now with the smooth water and the smooth clouds up in the sky. If you have any questions about this process, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to help you out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And of course, don't forget to visit naturemike.com for more learning resources and tutorials.